She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I'm going to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. Whatever mindset you have, the universe gives you more of that. The universe also doesn't distinguish between I do and I don't want. If you have a thought of something, it will attract more of that. I feel sick. The universe says, cool, I'm going to give you more sickness. Instead, you need to be grateful for the fact that, you know, if you have like a terminal illness, the fact that you're not dead yet, you still have purpose on this earth. I'm thankful that I'm not gone. I'm thankful that I have people that love me. I don't feel so hot, but hey, I know I'll get better. And you just, it's it's so much more than just a positive mindset. People like to preach positivity, but it goes so much deeper than that. Positivity is really like the topsoil. Gratitude, living in an abundant mindset, those are the roots. Hey there, welcome back to Detail Therapy. You just heard a snippet of my chat with Matthew Santoro, powerhouse YouTuber. We are going to hear a lot more from him, including how he learned to deal with the drama in his life, flipped it completely on its head with a simple mindset shift, what it was like to be in a depression, and how he has done a complete 180 in the last year, and how he starts his day, including details of a 5 a.m. wake up routine. I know you want to hear these details. We have a lot to get into with Matt today, but first, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Amy Landino and I will be your host of this show. I'm a YouTube creator, professional speaker, best-selling author, and entrepreneur in business for the last 10 years. And you know what? I'm here to help you go after the life that you want. You can find out more details about me and any of the other stuff I like to share on the internet over at youtube.com slash amytv. There's a lot of stuff over there, so check it out if you have not been there yet. I would like to say a big, big, big shout out to anyone who was with me last week, launch week for detail therapy. So many of you tweeted me, Instagrammed me, reviewed me, all the things of, of me and the show and everything. And I'm so, so glad that you guys are enjoying this podcast so far. We are just getting started as you are fully aware, literally just getting started. But I really appreciate all the feedback on the show and just the excitement overall with everyone and what you are sharing. I'm going to take just a moment to shout out one of you who took your precious time to review this show on one of your favorite podcast players. No matter where you listen, I am looking at your reviews and I appreciate you. It could be iTunes, it could be Stitcher, it could be anywhere else in the world on the podcast internet. And I'm going to give a shout out today to Javana Augustine, who said in her iTunes review... I'm an avid follower of Amy's YouTube channel, and I'm so excited to dive into the podcast series. Thank you for putting such relevant, timely, and engaging content together. My future success thanks you. Yes, praying hands emoji, hands up emoji, LOL. I'm all about it, Giovanna. Thank you so much for the review and everyone else who has been jumping in there to give five stars. You're the bomb. Seriously, thank you so much. I will be continuing to read your reviews in case you would like a shout out. You can pop over to your favorite podcast player and leave your true and honest review. Thank you so much in advance. With that, we are not wasting any more time. We need to get into my chat with my next guest. Today, I'm sitting down with Matthew Santoro. Matt is a YouTube sensation, a podcaster, and an author. He's best known for his amazing fact videos about our world. I feel grateful to have known him for the last five years, even before his channel really took off. I mean, we've been internet friends for a while. He's been through a lot in that time, and the incredible advances he has made in his mindset and positivity will make this one of the most motivating hours of your week. And I am promising that to you right now. So let's get into it. Welcome to the show, Matthew Santoro. Matthew Santoro, thanks for being here. What's up? Actually, thanks for letting me be here. I'm in your apartment in LA. Yes. I'm so excited to be sitting down with you. It has been so long. It has. I, we met on the internet, I mm -hmm. think, and then connected uh, a couple times in person, but not much. It's been a, like a long friendship, but n you know, I don't live in LA, so we don't get mm -hmm. to see each other. I want everybody to hear a lot more about you. Why do you create? Ooh. 
So deep. We're starting off yeah. in, in the deep end. Yeah, eh? I want to know. I want to go right in. All right. I create because it is something that is deep within me that I just need to do. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine myself doing anything else. I used to be an accountant. I went what you know society tells you is the quote unquote safe route. Turns out there is no safe route. I got laid off even with a master's degree. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me because the whole time I had always been a creative person. I had always enjoyed entertaining people. I was even a goofball in high school. I would throw myself against the chalkboard and do this thing that I called the mother lobster. Don't ask. <laughs> but it was just I've always enjoyed making people laugh and, and talking to people and even public speaking. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. And it's just at a very, very primal level. It makes me happy. Yeah. It's got to be why you've become so successful over time. Before we get into that, what are you drinking right now? Oh, uh, do you want the brand? Yeah. Oh. I want to know everything about what you have in that glass because I'm drinking just Fiji water, which is very obvious because of the logo that's right yeah. here. But what are you drinking? It's called Zevia. Uh, it's, what is that? Yeah. it's I don't know if it's available outside of LA, but it's a Stevia. Oh, it's, a, and it's an LA specific Maybe. drink. Maybe. I fair. don't know. I don't know. But it's a Stevia sweetened soda. Mm-hmm. And I mean, most sodas are not good for you. Right. At least almost, I'd say probably almost all of them. But this one in particular, if you were to... Pick out one that's quote unquote good for you. Mm -hmm. I would say this one. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a soda drinker, but you've been feeling the pressure, especially in LA by all your healthy friends. Right. And no artificial colors. It's clear. I was going to say, like, I heard you crack something open when I went to go refresh my lip gloss. It's not water. And it's not water. No, it's It looks like sparkling water. I know. And it's cola. It is. That's so weird. I know. You know what it reminds me of? It doesn't taste as sweet, but uh, Crystal Pepsi. Oh my gosh, I love bringing Crystal Pepsi references back. I'm mm-hmm. glad we got mm-hmm. that one in here. <laughs> there was so, so much awesome. sugar in that though. Like you think regular pe- Pepsi has a lot of sugar? Mm. My goodness. Oh my God. It was just... Yeah, that one yeah. didn't last Diabetes in a bottle. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well hopefully if you're listening, you have a drink as well and you're going to enjoy yourself while we have a chat here. Like I said, Matt's been a, a good friend of mine for a long time, but, but that's not the only piece of notoriety that he has. He is a very, very successful YouTuber with more than six million subscribers and 1.2 billion views yeah and a book you know overnight success much or (laughs) you know i I always like to say it takes 10 years to become an overnight success right so talk to me about maybe the first part of that 10 years what was it like for you to get started why did you decide to start doing this you said you were in yeah you know corporate america like what what corporate canada (laughs) sorry corporate canada how dare you eh oh god we've already gone there (laughs) <laughs> Oops. Yeah. L. So um, how did you get started? Yeah. I actually had been making YouTube videos uh, while I was an accountant. I would even write scripts at work. Like I was that into it. Hmm. And looking back, it was so obvious that that was my real passion. Like I should be crunching numbers and I'm literally at my desk writing YouTube scripts. Oh my gosh. But even before that, I had discovered YouTube circa 2007, a year after it started. Mm-hmm. And I remember being at parties with my Sony, uh, I was going to say vlog camera. That term didn't exist back no. then. But, um, <laughs> my Sony camera that I remember it was amazing. It could shoot 1080p. It had the HD logo on it. 4k was not even a dream at that point. And I remember taking video of parties and people looking at me thinking, what are, I remember this one girl, I was recording her at a party I know that sounds creepy, but it wasn't. I swear (laughs) it wasn't like that. And she saw me with the camera and I was recording people playing ping pong. And this girl goes, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm just recording. I'm going to put it on YouTube thinking, oh, this is exciting. She goes, what is that? What is YouTube? Mm. What is YouTube? That Mm. those were words that came out of her mouth. (laughs) So I, I stopped recording at that point, but I remember putting a lot of this footage and I still have a lot of the footage uh, from my very first YouTube channel, which doesn't exist anymore, but Relatable. Yeah, but I started, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Everyone has one of those. Yeah, it was named after a Linkin Park song. Just, <laughs> Let's leave that alone. Yeah, that's why I've never had a tattoo because I'm afraid that 10 years from now, what mattered to me today isn't going to matter then. Mm. So like I have mm. a friend that in high school got a big Slimer tattoo on his calf. Yeah, you can't undo that. Oof. As yeah. much as you used to like, you know, Ghostbusters, maybe he yeah. still does. But anyway, the point is, 
I would uh, make these videos and then I stopped and I became an accountant and life became very serious and Matt got his master of accountancy degree and I put my head down and I was trapped in the matrix and one day I got laid off and it was literally like Neo being like, like unplugged from the matrix. I got flushed out the tube and I landed in the real world and, um, you know, I was unemployed for a whole year and at the beginning of being laid off, I told myself, I'm going to give myself one year mm -hmm. of attacking this full time, giving it all that I can, being broke. And at the at the end of one year, if I haven't made it, then I'm going to do something else. Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, I was never going to go back into accounting. Mm -hmm. I knew. I was happy that I got laid off. And so I would shoot weddings on the side to try to make ends meet and I would do some photography, just anything. But it was always in the video or photo space. It always involved a camera and it really made me happy. Yeah. And at the end of one year, we went across the country in the Ford Fiesta movement with Scott Ken Martin. Yeah. And I think that, I saw you. I de he stopped through Columbus yep. at one point. I remember seeing I remember that. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's hysterical. That's a blast from the past. That is a blast from the past. But if it wasn't for the Ford Fiesta movement, I don't think I'd be where I am now. Oh, wow. That was a major, major risk for me. Mm -hmm. I was a small town kid, small town mentality. Came from a small town of 50,000 people called Welland, Ontario. And pe very few people made it out of there. It's kind of like you come from there, you stay there, you don't really go anywhere. And for me, when my career took off, I remember thinking – Oh my God, it was because I went across the country and I took that risk. Mm. And I was terrified. I I had never been on a plane at that point. I was 27. Wow. I had never really left the country except for Buffalo. So to travel across America, I remember getting health insurance as a Canadian through my credit card, which was like 50 bucks a day. And I was like, well, there's guns and knives in America. Like, I don't know anything. Of this. Like, I'm just a dumb kid, right? <laughs> 27 isn't really a kid. But What's health insurance? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Health insurance. <laughs> yeah. My question is, you're an accountant, you're now you're a YouTuber, you sound like a very sort of like excited, open personality, yeah. very easy to talk to. I just had an amazing time talking to you on your podcast right yeah. before this. The Matthew Santoro podcast. Of course, go check it out. And um, I'm wondering if you can tell me if you're an introvert or an extrovert. I think I'm very much in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, which I know might be a common answer, but maybe not. I know a lot of people that are which on Which side both do you sides. think you sway to? Like, which one's your core? I very much lately have been an extrovert. Uh, I used to have really bad mental health for the last three years. Mm -hmm. I was really depressed. Mm -hmm. um, there were just some long-standing issues that I didn't handle. And they pretty much all stemmed from my YouTube career taking off. It was such a blessing and a curse at wow. the same time. And one thing I've realized is fame will exacerbate your problems money will exacerbate your problems it will expose them mm -hmm. and it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I'm very grateful that I went through that three years of deep depression because it forced me at the end of it to say I'm not doing this anymore it was my 33rd birthday and I was crying in my bed that's mm -hmm. a really sad story yeah. but it was my th or sorry 32nd birthday mm -hmm. I was in my bed crying not because anything was wrong I just I felt alone I just couldn't get out of the house and it was that moment that I decided I'm going to make a change. And I, uh, I tried medication. That helped a lot. That just got me out of the pit. Yeah. Uh, I started seeing a therapist. Uh, and slowly over the last year, I've rebuilt my mind, essentially. Oh, wow. And where I'm at now is <laughs> I, I couldn't be any more happy. I've discovered gratitude. I've discovered meditation and mindfulness. That's so great. My, I'm in the best physical shape of my life. Mm -hmm. I could not be at a better place in my life right now if I tried. Mentally and physically, I'm absolutely crushing it. And uh, I mean, a lot of it really was finding gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the mental health part was important, but gratitude was like the cherry on top. It was like, okay, what's the next step of maintaining happiness? And it was all gratitude. Yeah. I, I want to get into this so much. I just kind of want to put a, a, a pin in something really quick because I think it's interesting that you say that you're an 
an extrovert because I'm an introvert. And yeah. I find that a lot of times people are talking to me about, oh, you can't make a YouTube video if you're an introvert. It just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Have you ever found that to be true in any case that like somebody that's an extrovert versus an introvert is better or worse than in, in the other camp if mm -hmm. they're making content online? Or do you think that your extroversion has helped you tremendously? Yeah, well, I mean, the reason I brought up that story of the mental health yeah. is because I've gone back and forth. So during those three years, I was very much an introvert. I couldn't even leave the house. Right. I didn't want to talk to people. Constant social anxiety. Do you think that's introversion or do you think that that was just Good the state of mind that, that you didn't I would need say state people of mind. at I would, that time? I would say state of mind, but it was it was very akin mm -hmm. to introverts. Introvert. I know a lot of yeah. introverts have social anxiety, so there were many traits that very much carried over. So that's why I said hmm. that. Hmm. Um, but I, I think I've always been an extrovert. I very much think it helps to be an extrovert, but... That being said, I know many people that are introverts in real life, mm -hmm. and when they're on camera, they just come alive. Right. I think that's what's really interesting to me is because I, there's a, a little bit of a confusion between like an introvert and an extrovert versus like being on and not being on. I think mm -hmm. the camera and actually I speak also, I, everyone thinks I'm an extrovert in person mm -hmm. too, because I kind of just like present myself in that situation. So I think it's part of the job like to be on, but it doesn't mean you can't be an introvert and, and create great content. But I think it's so cool to hear the ebb and flow that has happened with you where mm -hmm. you were still creating content during those three years and yeah. you were not feeling at your best. And you maybe you think of that as introversion or whatever the case may be, but it was still possible to be a success if you were able to push through and focus on mm -hmm. what your goal is. Yeah, I don't know how I did it. I really don't. Uh, I think it's because... I've just had a fire inside of me mm -hmm. that I always knew was there. And even though the fire got really dim, the spark never went out. Mm. And I remember being at that time describing being depressed as being in a, a pitch black room where I'm struggling to find the light and I'm just grasping and grasping with my eyes closed and I just couldn't find a solution. But I always had the desire. That's the difference. I always had the desire to get better. And, and the, being a creative, I think, is part of what got me through that because I know – I mean I was really down, but I know there are some people that have it way worse, that they literally can't get out of bed. Mm. And I always had physical fitness as a part of my life, which I think really helped. And I, I would recommend anybody you know, make physical fitness a huge part of your life because it enhances – everything every single part of your life so that would be a tip i'd give but mm -hmm. just you know even when i turned on the camera even faking a smile once in a while really kind of jump started real feelings of happiness it was almost like mm. a reminder of where i was before youtube took off yeah and before all the craziness. Yeah. But now I, I'm happy to say that I'm both happy and motivated and excited to make content. So I'm glad that you already started dropping a tip in this direction, like physical fitness, move yeah. your body, you know, even cracking a smile that you desperately do not want to. Mm -hmm. It makes a change in how you feel and how you present yourself just yeah. incrementally over time. Can you talk about some of the things that you've done in, it sounds like the last year to really start changing state of mind. So let's just break it down. What does, what does your morning look like? Like when you wake up in the morning, how do you set yourself up for success? Yeah, I'm super proud of this. I'm a very disciplined person. And that's when I realized the other day that if I'm going to find a partner, they have to be a disciplined person, period. Mm. You don't have to be a supermodel. In fact, I don't want a supermodel. But if you go to the gym regularly, even if you're technically what some people consider chubby, I don't even care as long as you're putting in the effort because I know that in the long term, you will reach your goal because you can't not. You're Even if your goal is just to take care of yourself. To, I just to want people, to yeah, I just want my partner to be hap uh, happy. I want them to be healthy. I want, uh, and, and the same thing goes for my friends. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have anybody around me that's not disciplined, period. Friend, girlfriend, anything like that. So, um, because you become the average of the people around you. Yes, you do. That's why it's a good idea to be the dumbest person in the room because mm. you can only go up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, what was the question? So what's the morning routine? Yeah, like morning routine. So I'm very disciplined. I wake up every day at five or 6am. Mm -hmm. I switch it up from there. Generally I'll have 20 ounces of water. I'll have 10 ounces of coffee. Uh, the reason I keep track of my liquids like that is because my goal is to have a liter of water a day or at least of liquids in general. It's mm -hmm. good for your kidneys. Uh, 
from there, I go to the gym. I lift weights for just 20 minutes, like nothing intense. Sometimes I'll run for half an hour and then I'll come home and I'll create some content. Lately, I've been really on fire and I'll give you today as an example. Mm -hmm. So today I woke up at 5 Mm a.m. knowing that you were going to be here, knowing that immediately after you, I had another podcast. Mm -hmm. I know that my editor is going away on vacation to Egypt, so I have to get him a lot of videos in advance. Mm. So today, I'll tell you what I've done today. I woke up at 5 a.m., I had my coffee, I had my water, I shot three videos, I went to the gym, Mm -hmm. recorded a podcast with you, Mm -hmm. recording your podcast now. now. (laughs) My friend Lisa Bilyeu, who's uh, Tom's uh, wife, a uh, friend of mine, she's coming on to be on a podcast. Awesome. After that, I'm shooting three more videos. Wow. So the focus very much on take care of yourself first. Yes. And then start taking care of your audience because you obviously have oh, yeah. such a presence where they are a big part of your life. And so yeah. you're making sure you're prioritizing that content so you can be consistent mm-hmm. with the thing that you care the most about and fill in the blanks from there. Do you ever watch TV? <laughs> yeah. I definitely have downtime. Mm-hmm. Like, But... I sort of mix the two whenever possible. For example, when I'm going to edit our podcast that we did, mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to it back as I always do, cut out the ams, ums, uhs, try to make it a little cleaner. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to play a little Gungeon on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Fantastic game. <laughs> a little addictive. But, you know, so it's kind of mixing the two. Yeah. And the, it's just the fact that I love what I do in creation in general and the fact that I have a platform is that's what motivates me. That's what keeps me going. And that's what allows me to create so much content pretty much on my own. I do have a small team. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just, I like to I like to have quote unquote downtime and go out and do things that aren't creation related. Mm-hmm. But even then I'm taking Instagram stories. Sure. So I'm basically always creating, but it's just because I love it. Sure. So you said you woke up at 5 a.m., which is kind of funny because a lot of people discover me on my YouTube channel because of a video about waking up at 5 a.m. And I think there's a misconception about waking up early and being a morning person. Mm. There's this like, are you a morning person or a night person? I guess, do you see yourself as one or the other or and or is it that you just have stuff to do? So that's what time you wake up. I'm a morning person. Okay. I am a morning person. And I think that's because I've trained myself to be that way. When I was a student, had to get up early. Mm -hmm. When I was an accountant, had to get up Mm -hmm. early. I've always got up early. So that's why it's difficult for me sometimes to hang out with other creatives because people that didn't have my experience in business or what have you, they have always been staying up late. Mm -hmm. So Swoozy will text me Mm -hmm. at 11 p.m. Hey, bro, want to go hit in and out I'm like, God, it's 11 p.m. No. Who eats at 11, Swoozy? We need to talk. YouTubers. (laughs) The answer is YouTubers. And he wants to go. And sometimes I'll go, but I'm like, you know, an old man. I'm like, well, you know, I got to go to bed and I got to wake up at 5 a.m. And if I go out. But look, I'm not that rigid. I will go out because I recognize that you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, right? So I like to go out with Swoozy and whoever, little in and out action, animal style, crazy delicious. <laughs> and after that, I'll come home and I'll sleep in for an extra two hours the next day, whatever, because I understand that the social recharge mm. that I get from being around other people, as, as silly as that sounds, Not at all. Is, is something that you do have to take advantage of when the opportunity arises. And that's because you're extroverted. Mm-hmm. You thrive off of being around those people, so you do need that interaction. Otherwise, you would run yourself into the ground by just waking up and taking care of yourself and doing the content. You need to do all of those things, Mm -hmm. but you need the social interaction, where an introvert is more exerting energy on that social interaction, and they thrive by recharging on their own. What are you? Introvert. You are an introvert. Yeah, absolutely. See, I do not get that vibe whatsoever. Absolutely. I know, right? Because I'm on. I know when to turn it on. But, But that's, I think, the big thing to distinguish there is it's possible to still still do a lot of things that you might think oh only a certain type of person can do that yeah but to still be yourself if you respect who you are and not try to change it Mm -hmm. so i think that that's know yourself really big thing to point out it's one of the oldest concepts know yourself know thyself was there a piece of that when you were going through your depression trying to figure out how to know yourself better sure sure yeah i mean what were the aha moments in that um During that time, there weren't a lot of aha moments. It was just a jumble of emotions and confusion Mm. and how am I going to get out of this? It was just a mess. 
And some people listening might identify with that. They sure. might say, oh, man, like <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. And believe me, you're not alone. There's millions and millions of Americans or wherever you are in the world that suffer with depression or social anxiety, whatever have you. So uh, for me, the aha moments have just begun flooding in since my 33rd birthday, which was July 16th. So many I can't even tell you. So many aha moments, so many epiphanies. Mm -hmm. Um, But a lot of it had to do with mindfulness and meditation and really – starving my ego Mm -hmm. like it's Mm. it's just i'm smiling about it because my i was fully identified with my ego over the last three years and when people think of the word ego they think of uh, arrogance they think of things like that but ego in this scenario i mean from a philosophical point the voice in your head that tells you that you're not enough the voice in your head that lives in a scarcity mindset Mm -hmm. that no matter how much success you have doesn't matter because the ego is always feeding off of what if it goes away and it needs it needs to justify its own existence and i could go on for for a long time about this but if you if you have a lot of self-doubt and you have constant negative thoughts and you're depressed and things like that from a very high level it means that you're completely identified with your ego and once you recognize that you have an ego and that those thoughts are not you and that you are a you just are you are an eternal form that is not of this body Mm. your body is just the physical shell of that thing and i know we're getting a bit spiritual but i would recommend reading a new earth by eckhart tolle Mm -hmm. which is somewhere in this house right now uh or the power of now but i mean i've read so many like you can look over there i've got over 50 books ready to be read right now i've got religious texts i've got all the religious texts. I've got tons of self-help books, uh, even though I'm never going to get through the religious texts because they're so dense. And I think it was yeah. more of just, it was the intention of, because sure. you know, I want to educate myself. But I would highly recommend to start anything by Eckhart Tolle, mm-hmm. uh, the Tao Te Ching, mm-hmm. which is one of the most influential slash epic uh, books ever written. Uh, some would argue more so than the Bible. Yeah. It's such a simple book. Wow. It was uh, written by Lao Tzu. Oh, geez. Um, the Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Yeah. The Secret, The Power of Now I mentioned. I read, I've read i read about chakras. The Alchemist. You I'm just looking. books all over this apartment, by the I way. Re- I'm very I, impressed. I read voraciously. I love that. And one of the biggest things, other than obviously learning how to help your life, uh, which is what reading these self help, self-help books do, it, it exercises your mind. Mm-hmm. Like... We exercise our body, but we don't think of our mind as a muscle, but your mind is just as much a part of your body as your biceps or your legs. So it's the same thing if you're depressed. So many people don't consider their brain a body part that needs to be fixed. If you broke your arm, you'd put a cast on it. Mm. So why is your brain any different? Why wouldn't you go and see and do whatever you can to fix that? Whether it's medication, whether it's seeing a therapist, like do what you got to do. You would do the same thing if you broke a bone. So why is your brain any different? I love that. That's such a good point. So you, you talked a lot about reading, which is great. I was going to ask you for book recommendations and you just pick one. I love it. I love it. (laughs) I got Malcolm Gladwell, whatever. Such good books in this house and and the ones that you've read and the ones that you have to read. I'm going to link to a bunch of those in the notes reading. You, you mentioned meditation too. Mm -hmm. So how, um, how did that start to become a part of this? Mm -hmm. Maybe this was a a transition. Maybe it was like an aha moment transitions you through, um, we're going to come out of this now. Was meditation part of that daily practice of get my mind to do something different than what it's used to? That was the beginning. Okay. That was the beginning. So back when my friend 11, who's one of the most talented freestylers in Toronto, came to stay with me last year when I was living in Hollywood. He stayed with me for a month. And I remember just contacting him and he was going to have an Airbnb. And I'm like, man, just come stay with me. Like I want to share. And up until that point, it was such an odd thing for me to do because I was very isolated. Mm. But I knew I needed to change. And I don't know why I did it. But I said, just come stay with me. And I knew I'd be super uncomfortable having someone else you know, wake up and they're there in my place. Like that was weird because I was alone for so long, Mm -hmm. but I just knew something needed to change. And it was that that changed everything because he is very much into spirituality and meditation and he would meditate every morning 
He'd be like, you want to meditate with me today? I was like, no, nah, man, that's not, like, that's not my thing. You do it. He's like, okay. Next day, you want to meditate with me today? No, nah, man, that's not my wow. thing. Okay. Weeks go by. You want to meditate with me today? Uh, I mean, I'll try it. I did it. I felt really silly. He's like, how do you feel? I'm like, oh, okay, not bad. Like, this is really dumb. What was like the break it down for me? Did he use an app? Was he just kind of sitting so, there? Did he coach you through it? Yep. So he would listen to YouTube videos. Okay. There's lots of free yeah. ones. I would just sit there in silence, which is what real meditation is. Mm -hmm. However, when he left, I continued. And then everything really changed when Apple named Calm their app of the year last year mm -hmm. in 2017. So I downloaded it. 60 bucks a year. I can't explain to you the return, the ROI I <laughs> got on that 60 bucks. That's awesome. It completely changed my life. For the first six months, I really struggled with quieting the thoughts, and I still do, but that's what meditation is. People have a misunderstanding. Meditation isn't losing all control, and you go into this like Zen state. It's not like, it's actually the exact opposite. You gain control. It's presence. It's being fully aware. It's shutting the voices off. And more so than that, it's shutting the voices off is sort of the ultimate goal, I suppose, but more so than that, it's observing the thoughts. So unless you're a Zen master, you're never going to fully shut the voices off. Like the Buddha probably did that. Mm -hmm. Eckhart Tolle can probably do that. You and I are probably never going to do that. Our brains are just Tough. not wired that way. Unless we, you know, lived in the mountains like a, like a monk. And it takes a lot of practice to get to that point. It takes a lifetime to master uh, meditation. But the thing that people misunderstand is it's really not about shutting the voices off unless, like I said, you're those people. Mm -hmm. What it is about is observing the thoughts. As soon as you start observing the thoughts, you have now disassociated with the mm. ego. You have stepped out of the ego. You stepped out of the pain body and you now are able to see the thoughts as the ego trying to manipulate you and feed off of your pain and your thoughts and justify its own existence. And when you do that, the space that you've created is peace. Yeah. That's the peace. And now you start to live more mindful. And when you start having these nasty thoughts that have been controlling you for years like they did me, you start to almost observe it like a child would observe a flower with wonder like, huh, look at that. My ego's really trying to fight right now for its existence. This is fascinating. Instead of living in that thought and saying, I'm unworthy, I'm not worthy of love, I'll never be successful, whatever the thoughts are in your head, it's that separation that allows you to begin the process of healing and becoming more mindful and just find happiness. I love that. I love yeah. that. I think that's the most succinct what? way I've ever put that in my whole life. <laughs> yeah, very well done. I, I'm curious how you define um, being mindful. Like when you say that you're mindful, like what do you feel like that, that yeah. means to you? Being able to observe thoughts and not live in those thoughts. So even when you're being mindful in a situation with another person mm -hmm. or as yourself just walking down the street, mm -hmm. like that's you're observing the environment. You are not... A, a, an actual part of it you feel like it is happening around you and you're looking at it that way rather than I'm in it and I identify as it no no I look at it as you are a part of things you can't not like meditation is not like you separating yourself from the world like you sure. still you still are bound to this form like you still mm -hmm. have to I still have to talk to you like a human you, being yeah, and like yeah. we still have to function within society but what it does is Within that arena, it allows you to now reframe what you're thinking, feeling, and seeing. Hmm. So, for example, on my podcast, I hope that's okay to, I don't mean yeah. to keep plugging no, it. No, I love that. On my podcast, Plug it away. Let's yeah, do it. We, uh, we talked about people being late mm -hmm. and disrespecting people's time. Mm -hmm. I have been, quote unquote, disrespected multiple times since I've left here, uh, lived here mm -hmm. as most people would consider it. Oh, they're disrespecting you. They're not showing up. They're late. Since I've become mindful and really found happiness, I can literally find the silver lining in anything almost instantly. It might take a few minutes depending on how bad the situation is. Right. But instead of hearing bad news or quote unquote what people would consider bad news because as Shakespeare put it, nothing is either good or bad. Only thinking makes it so. Mm which is Hamlet is 
one of my favorite things of all time, but you definitely need to read Hamlet if you haven't. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of finding the silver lining in things and reframing. So if somebody's late, well, you can focus on the fact that they're late and they're quote unquote wasting your time, or you can walk around the restaurant, meet some people, look around, discover something you've never discovered before and just live, just breathe, yeah. take it, take it as an opportunity to exercise patience because that opportunity with the next opportunity, there are no problems. There are challenges and opportunities. Mm -hmm. I don't use the word problem. There are no problems. Problems suggest that something is wrong that needs to be solved. That's just a perception. Things just are. So if something goes quote unquote wrong, okay, what's the opportunity? What can I gain from this? I love that you just said that. I was just listening to a podcast the other day with um, Robin Sharma and he was saying, you know, what is the opportunity here? That is his sort of like uh, process. Anytime yeah. somebody might usually think this is a challenge, this is a problem. And it sounds very much to me that you've figured out how to get away from victim mentality. That, because otherwise, what are you, well, you're, you're what, right? You're a victim of somebody being late to coffee, right? Oh, and, mm -hmm. and if you overanalyze it, and most of the times people just don't realize that how late they are actually may matter to the person that they're going to meet. But then you decide, okay, well, I'm just, I'm going to be a step above this. I'm not going to take it personally mm -hmm. and say that Susie is terrible and she doesn't respect me. I'm just going to separate myself from the situation and say, I'm not a victim of this. I'm mm -hmm. just choosing not to spend my time waiting for her mm -hmm. every day or whenever the case may be. Yeah. I want to quickly say something about the victim mentality yeah. thing. I, and I would argue most people live in a victim mentality or I used to live in a victim mentality. I very much don't anymore. And the way that I got out of that was changing my language. There have been multiple things that have happened to me over the last three years that some people would consider unfair, that were awful, that some people would say, you know, I, I, I was with a girl that was awful to me. I got in a lot of YouTube drama hmm. that was wicked overblown and it really hurt me at the time. But the whole time I was saying what these people did to me, what they did to me, what they did to me, that's a victim mentality. All that I did was switch two to four, what these people did for me. Mm. Because of what they did for me, I'm a stronger person than I've ever been in my life. There's not a lot that rattles me anymore. So it's what they did for me. Your business partner screws you? Okay. That's what he did for you because he's presented you with an opportunity. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Not what he did to you. Saying what he did to you, there's no help there. There's no, there's no solace. You're just screwed. So it's all about how you tackle things and how you approach things. I love that. I love that you point that out because it's such a small shift, mm -hmm. but it completely changes your demeanor mm -hmm. and you're only hurting yourself if you go one way or the other. It's called reframing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a lot of these topics and concepts I've gathered through all my reading over the last six months. I've been voraciously reading. How many books do you think you read? My goal was a book a week, mm. which turned out That's to be a good goal. Turned out to be unrealistic. <laughs> but, but in the same way that I bought those religious texts, because mm -hmm. I want to educate myself on skiism and, uh, you know, the Muslim religion and, and Judaism, whatever, like all the Christianity, even, you know, uh, what else though? Buddhism, Islam, all that, you know, I'm probably never going to read those, but it's the intention. Mm -hmm. And even if I get through a fraction of it, that's still better than nothing. And I have 50 books over there that are waiting to be read. And I'm just going to knock them off one by one. And every book that I read, I learn something new. I learn something new. And you gather and you start to see a connection between all these things. You start to notice a pattern. Oh, all the greatest minds consider this. Mm. All the greatest minds that have ever done anything approach life like this. And it really starts to shape your perception because that's all the world is. Everything in life comes down to perception. Everything comes down to how you frame things in the world. And if all you do is just reframe something, it can become a positive thing. Absolutely. Just to get in the right mindset, we're talking about meditation. Mm -hmm. We're talking about mindfulness. Do you have a writing practice? A writing practice? Yeah. What do you mean? Writing, just literally just sharing the thoughts that are in your head with a piece of paper and a pen. No, no, no. I, I know that that is what works for some people. Mm -hmm. That is not what works for me. Yeah. Uh, I, how do you feel about writing? I don't like it. 
No. It's just not for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've I've heard Tony Robbins. I've heard mm-hmm. Les Brown. I've heard probably Gary at some point talk about. Probably right not thing. Gary. Let's be no, honest. not Gary. Not Gary. <laughs> Gary. Gary's too ADD to write. He's, he's writing on Twitter. That's yeah. pretty much it. But for many people, writing things down and having intention mm-hmm. and writing things on the mirror and seeing it every day, that just doesn't work for me. What it comes down to is you need to hear what everybody does and find what works for you. Right. For me, I don't like writing. I like hearing myself talk. That's why I started a podcast. <laughs> I like to share higher level ideas. I like to have people like yourself on and other boss independent men and women that are capable of higher level thinking. Sure. And I like to just give value to people's lives. And that's why my podcast is not monetized and I don't have ads on it. I have turned down brand deals. Haven't made a penny off of it. And I like that because it's a pure it's it's a pure little flower mm. thing right now. Like there's no nothing that is that ruin the soil. It's 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 pure as can be. So I want to keep it that way for as long as possible. And I literally said I'm not gonna start accepting brand deals until they're so high that I would be foolish to turn them down. <laughs> and that hasn't happened yet? No. Really? No. It's brand new. Yeah, it is, but it's a thriving market. It is. And I want to, I just want to keep it as pure as possible. I but love it. Un- literally, literally, until someone comes to me and starts offering me 50 to 100K, <laughs> I'm not accepting yeah. anything. Yeah. Because I'm in a very advantageous position where I do live in abundance mm-hmm. and I have enough money to live. And, well, actually, those are kind of two separate things because abundance is more totally. of a mindset. Let's get into that, actually. Yeah, I, okay. I want to dig into that. We're getting real is, philosophical. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, I like it, but yeah. but it's also super practical, right? Because yeah. we're talking about mindset, the literally the things, specific mm-hmm. details of what you're doing in order to be in that mindset. Mm-hmm. I want you to talk about what the difference has been between the abundance and the scarcity mindset for Gratitude. you. Gratitude. That's the specific thing. It changed everything. Simple as that. Finding gratitude for the things that are in my life. When I had the most money in my life, which was, I don't know, say 2015, 2016, Mm -hmm. maybe even 2017, the three years that I was really depressed, it meant nothing. It meant nothing. I would buy so much BS junk to fill my house. Yeah, you said you lived in a penthouse before. Yeah, lived in a penthouse, couldn't appreciate it, woke up sad every day. Um, It's why there are billionaires that are depressed. It's Mm -hmm. also why there are people in mud huts in countries in Africa that are happy as a clam. Mm -hmm. It's just appreciating what you have. It's not tricking yourself. It's not woo-woo, life is amazing. It's just truly saying there's always someone that's going to have it worse. And that's not the best way to look at it, but it's true. There's always someone that's going to have it worse. And when I started appreciating what I have, Mm -hmm. everything changed. And I stopped dedicating energy, most importantly, to what I don't have. And when I started appreciating what I did have, I was able to save that energy. Because when you wake up every day, this is something really important that people need to understand. When you wake up every day, imagine the amount of energy you have as a glass of water. Mm -hmm. You have a finite amount of energy. Mm -hmm. You do not, you're like a battery. You don't have an infinite amount of energy. Every single time you have a thought, make a decision, anything, you pour a little water out. Negative thoughts, negative energy uses way more of that cup of water than positive thoughts. Mm -hmm. In many ways, positive thoughts sort of replenish it sometimes. So for me, once I stopped having the negative thoughts and started really appreciating what I have, that freed up a lot of extra glass space to spend that energy on things that are going to benefit me, that are going to get me to a place that other people would consider externally abundant, like money, like fame. And that's why I think my podcast is going to be huge. And that's why I'm sure yours is going to be huge because I can see that you're crushing it. You're grateful. And when you start living in that mindset, whatever mindset you have, the universe gives you more of that. The universe also doesn't distinguish between I do and I don't want. If you have a thought of something, it will attract more of that. I feel sick. The universe says, cool, I'm going to give you more sickness. Mm. Instead, you need to be grateful for the fact that, you know, if you have like a terminal illness, the fact that you're not dead yet, right. you still have purpose on this earth. I'm thankful that I'm not gone. I'm thankful that I have people that love me. I don't feel so hot, but hey, I know I'll get better. And you just, it's 
it's so much more than just a positive mindset. People like to preach positivity, but it goes so much deeper than that. Positivity is really like the topsoil. Gratitude, living in an abundant mindset, those are the roots. Mm. This is a massive, massive shift from being in a depression. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, and obviously reading is just one example of this, but do you think that this, the people you surround yourself with has affected this mindset of yours as well? No. Why not? Because although my, although the support from my parents Mm -hmm. and the occasional friend that popped by obviously helps you, it has to come from within. You have to recognize that you are born enough when you were born. You come from the source energy, whether you call that God, love, the universe, Allah, call it whatever you want. To me, it's all the same thing. Good vibes, whatever. Consciousness. You come from that energy and you are born enough. No amount of money, success, material objects, people in your life, none of these things will make you any more valuable. And when you recognize that and you recognize that all the things that you do have is really just the cherry on top, you're laughing. Mm. You just recognize how amazing life is and you recognize that whether you have people in your life or not, whether you have money or not, whether good or bad things happen to you or what you know we're, we label as good or bad things, that does not change where you are in your life or it shouldn't. But do you think that because your mindset has shifted so much that you, and we were just talking about somebody's late, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody's late, you're, you, you have a a few chances to prove that you don't take your time, you know, for granted. And as soon as they don't prove that they take your time seriously, they're cut out. Yeah. Do you think you're more able to do that now because of the mindset of, I have value, I know I am a yes. value. I know I, mm-hmm. I believe in myself enough. I don't yeah. need you here or there. Mm-hmm. And if you take that for So do you think then you're surrounding yourself with more positive people because of the ability to kind of make that decision? As a result, mm-hmm. not as the purpose. Mm. Because I've been more confident and I know what my value is, people have just started weeding themselves out of my life. And, excuse me, even when it comes to friends, whether it's friends or girls I'm approaching, I've basically come up with a rule that is flexible, but you basically get two shots with me. Mm. And the first shot, say we need to go to coffee. You're late. If you have a good excuse, that doesn't count. But if you're just late and you're like half an hour late and you just disrespected my time, well, then we'll see what you do next time. If you do it again, you're not going to get a third time because not because I'm angry, just because, I mean, if I'm scheduling my time, I know, oh, if I hang out with Amy, which I know you never do that, (laughs) but I know that if I hang out with Amy, she's going to be half an hour late at least. Man, I could put that to better use. Mm, We're just not going to hang out. And with women, I approach it the same way. I very much believe in... Everything in life is a demonstration of higher value or lower value or what I call DLV or DHV. I learned this from the book, The Game. Highly recommend it. Yeah? Have you, yeah, okay. Blake's, <laughs> Blake's over here. It. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this book is called The Game. It was written by the world's greatest pickup artist, Neil Strauss from Toronto. What's up? <laughs> and it's not about picking up women. It's actually more of a study in NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. Mm-hmm. And what that is is understanding how people think. And once you understand that, and I actually have a book on NLP that I'm dying to read. It's it's goes much deeper. But man, you it's like literally learning how to hack the matrix. You can learn how to manipulate any situation. Not I don't mean negative manipulation. I mean understanding how people think. And you can use that to your advantage wow. and you can still be a good person while doing it. But the biggest thing I learned was DLV DHV, which means that I remember, I'll give you an example. I remember being super depressed. There was this girl that I liked in New Jersey who was a friend of mine. And we expressed interest in each other. She was here for a bit, hit it off. She went back to New Jersey. I was so alone and had so low confidence that I was texting her all the time. Mm -hmm. Hey, are you free to FaceTime? Uh, When are you coming back to LA? I, at one point I was willing to come out to New Jersey. This is really embarrassing, but it's because I'm not where I'm at anymore. 
to come out to New Jersey and stay at a hotel just to be around her for a week. I look back at that now and I cringe, but it also shows me how far I've come and that was a demonstration of lower value. Mm -hmm. Now, I demonstrate higher value in that you have two shots with me. I say I like you. I'm very direct. I like you. I'm interested in you. Let's go out. Yeah, perfect. We go out. We have a good time. I reach out to you a second time. This actually this actually happened uh, recently. Uh, reach out. Well, you know, I, I'm super busy and, you know, I just, I gotta, okay, well, that was your second shot and it, it's not like I'm mad. I'm not mad. It's just like, look, if I reach out to you a third time. Yeah or a fourth time and you keep saying no, now I'm demonstrating lower value. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, okay, I am accepting, I am accepting that you are not recognizing my value. Or maybe it's not that. Maybe they're just not that interested. But at a base level, they just you're just not a priority. Right. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, people make time for what's important. You have time for anything that's important to you. If you're not going to the gym, it doesn't mean that you don't have time for it. It means that it's just not a priority to you. Mm-hmm. And you might not like hearing that, but it's the truth. It is the truth. And it's a hard truth and it's a jagged pill to swallow and people don't want to acknowledge it, but it's true. You want to start a business? It's not that important to you if you're not spending the time on it. Right. You have the same amount of hours in the day as Beyonce. Beyonce accomplishes a whole crap ton. You can do that too. I love too. that that is the measurement we are using. Yeah, sure. Beyonce's <laughs> killing it. Why not? Excellent. Why not? But look, you have time for anything that matters to you. And I recommend everybody really focus on demonstrating higher value at all times and in all interactions. And the world will conform to you. And if that means that, you know, this girl that I'm talking to, you know, basically brushes me off the second time I show interest. Perfect. It just wasn't meant to be because it doesn't mean you don't like me. It just means that you are focused on your career or you're focused on something else. And that's more important to you. Not a problem. I, that whether you like me or not, or whether you turn me down or I try to kiss you and you say no, like any guys are so afraid of this stuff. None of that affects your self value. It doesn't Mm. affect who you are unless you let it. It's like the numbers online. You have to understand that your value is infinite. It is, it, is, it is what it is and nothing can ever affect that unless you in your mind and your ego allows it to. So I demonstrate higher value, whether it's a friend, whether it's you know someone I'm inter- interested in. You get a couple shots, but of course I am flexible on that. You know, like if there's various scenarios sure. and stuff. I'm just saying as a general rule of thumb, um, you know, desperate stinks. No one likes being around mm. someone that's desperate. And, uh, and I know, and I know what my value is. So I'm just like, okay, you're not making time for me. Well, okay. I know what my value is and you're not, you're not giving me that value. You wouldn't walk into a store and, you know, buy a pair of Nike shoes for a dollar. They would say no. Right. Like that's, you're not giving the value for that thing. It's the same thing with human beings. You're worth probably much more than you realize. And if someone doesn't express that, move on. Right. But don't lower, don't be the store that says, oh, all you want to give me is a dollar? Well, I, I'm desperate and I really want to sell these shoes. So I, I'm going to take the loss and here's the shoes for a dollar. They would never do that. So just know your value, DHV. I love it. I love it. One final tip on this. For the person that hasn't gotten as far as you've gotten right now, yeah. maybe they are in their own version of a depression. It can be at any level. They mm-hmm. just feel it. And they don't know that they feel worthy enough to make such a, this is it, one one and two. What do you think the first step for them to start to put some boundaries in their life and and feel a little bit more valuable would be? I don't know about boundaries, but the first thing you need to do is focus on three things minimum. I focus on four. Okay. Because the fourth pillar is uh, just because that's what my life is, which is creation. But... Excuse me. The three things that everyone needs to focus on to have a better life, read, meditate, and exercise. Those are the three pillars of my life that I exercise every day that I observe. The fourth, of course, is creation, but I know that doesn't apply to everybody. I think everyone can create in their own well, way. Well, that's the thing. I don't want to be preachy, but sure, I very sure. much believe that human that. human beings are creative creatures we are born with some level of creativity others more 
than others, obviously. But for me, the four pillars of my life that have given me so much peace and happiness, read, meditate, gym, create. Love Those that. are the four pillars of my life. I love that. Everyone's going to go and do that now. I have one more question for you. But for before it. I ask, uh, I want everyone to go and check out the Matthew Santoro podcast. Thank In you, addition yeah. to, of course, your your YouTube channel. Yeah, which your is, episode 24. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be on episode 24. <laughs> Where else can everybody follow you? Uh, just at Matthew Santoro on all platforms. I primarily use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. RIP Snapchat. <laughs> Yeah, it's just at Matthew Santoro and all those things. I'm pretty active and uh, I've been putting out more content than I ever have. Awesome. Awesome. Last yeah. question. What does it mean to you to go after the life that you want? What it means to me to go after the life that I want is the pursuit of happiness. It's, and I say the pursuit of happiness and not happiness because the pursuit of happiness is the same as the pursuit of of anything it's the process it's being in love with the process so many people are focused on the final destination people just want to be happy and once i'm happy then i'll be happy like in many ways by ignoring the process you're ignoring what happiness really is happiness isn't a destination it is the process it's being in the moment it's it's the grind it's pursuing growth and in that you can find happiness and that's what I think it is for me because you never stop growing as a human being there's there's never an end to life I think too many people say I'll be happy when I'll be I'll be happy when I get a million dollars I'll be happy when I find the perfect spouse I'll be happy when I lose 50 pounds no you can be happy right now and focus on the process of getting to that, it's perfectly fine to have a goal. But you got to be in love with the process because it's going to be a crap ton of work and you're going to be exhausted. But if you love it, you will naturally recharge yourself. And it is that recharging and that growing that will allow you to find happiness. Love that. Mm -hmm. Matthew Santoro, thanks for being on. Thank you. I'm super grateful for being here. I want to say thank you to you also for being such a outstanding member of the community and thank for being you. a boss lady who is super inspiring. You've inspired me. You've inspired countless men, but especially women in a world that is more important than ever. And I just want to say I'm grateful to be on this podcast and also for you being who you are. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. All right, let's do a detailed recap of my chat with Matt. I love how he talked about focusing on three things every day or four if you want to do what me and Matt do every day. The three things are read, meditate, and exercise. And I just love that because those three things are, I don't do all three every day, but I know if I did, oh God, every day would be a lot better. I know you're thinking it too, right? Like some of these things are difficult for us to make time for, but when we do, we feel so much better. And that fourth one is to create. If you can create every day, you keep that part of your brain moving and things seem so much more positive because you've been able to make something and that can give you so much ownership over your day because you felt like you accomplish something for you or for an audience. So think about how you can focus on either those three or four things, whatever you would prefer. Let's dig into those three things though. Read, meditate, exercise. Matt recommended a lot of books for some shifting of the mind. I mean, these are these are big mindset shift books, but I recommend quite a few of these as well. I'm just going to list off a couple. A New Earth and The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I can recommend these books. They are fantastic reads. They are so fascinating. They really make you step outside of yourself and get some good perspective. So check those out. He also recommended the Tao Te Ching. I have not read this one yet, but I have picked it up. I'm so excited to read that. He also recommended the Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins, which if you've been following my channel on YouTube, you know I totally recommend this read. I sat down with Mel in one of my YouTube videos. I will link that in the show notes so that you can check it out in case you're wondering what it's all about. Meditation, embracing meditation so that you can start to clear your mind and not try to be perfect at being a meditator, but to be better at observing your thoughts and stepping outside of the ego. I love how Matt gave a synopsis on this. I think it can be difficult to understand how you can really be good at meditation, but simply by 
making the time and taking the act of allowing yourself some silence and seeing where that can move your mind and how you can get a better understanding of yourself, discover more about yourself. Just a beautiful idea, especially on a daily basis. That's, that's, a, that's a big one. And he said, exercise. Matt goes to the gym at least 20 minutes every day. If you're interested in my workout routine, I have been going to the trainer either three to four days a week, and I'll try to do cardio on the other one to two days a week. Five days of working out is enough for me. So pick your exercise routine and stick with it, even if it's just 20 minutes on that treadmill that's been collecting dust in your basement. Whatever the case may be, start doing it. And then my favorite thing is what people are drinking first thing in the morning. So I want to shout out Matt for saying that he drinks a big glass of water in the morning so that he can get to his goal of one liter of water per day. And that is your detailed recap of my chat with Matthew Santoro. That was such an amazing episode. I'm sure that you're feeling all the feels after that. Lots to digest here. And so thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope that you can find something to attack right now based on either that recap or something else that you heard in the conversation so you can start to move the needle on going after the life that you want. Hey, do you love getting advice straight to your earbuds? I have a feeling you do because you're still listening, right? (laughs) So I want to send you a free audio training. This is the seven essential details for going after the life that you want. To receive this little audiogram from yours truly, subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast player, and then send a screenshot that you have subscribed to my email, hello at detailspodcast.com with audiogram, please, in the subject line. And we'll get that audiogram right over to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. As always, if you would like to discover more actionable details, head over to Amy TV by typing in your browser, youtube.com slash Amy TV, or you can search for Amy Landino in your YouTube app. Subscribe for good vibes and remember to continue to go after the life that you want. Cheers.